Well, welcome back. My name is Jim Kaysen. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And, of course, the subject that we're on right now is how to be led by the Spirit. Now, Romans 8 and 14, and I don't know, it might be good for us just to go ahead and, and read that passage. We've made reference to it several times now. But Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, Verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And so um, the Holy Spirit then, uh, the different ways, you know, we talked about his voice and we did a few of those things when we were in, in the session or two back. But let's just use some illustrations now and see just how this works. I uh, started flying airplanes uh, when I was 43. And uh, before that, I was in the car driving coast to coast in the United States and Canada. Spent a lot of time on the road, obviously. And then we got into flying. And uh, maybe the thing I need to do about that is, let's, let's go back then. In 1970, let's see, 7. I guess that would have been 76. We got out of 75. So somewhere 76, somewhere in there. I remember telling Kathleen, you know, I just need to get a get alone with God and just get some direction for the future. And so in that, of course, small town of 20,000, and uh, I just had her take me to the local motel and uh, where she could drop me off and, and, you know, my car wouldn't be out there. <laughs> be, you know, everybody knows your car. And so I could be left alone for 24 hours. So I checked in and... Uh, and um, it was really interesting because I'm, I'm alone in the room and I decided I would fast and not eat so I didn't have to mess with food, just drink water. And it was interesting. I'd get on my knees to pray and I'd keep, keep falling asleep. That went on, you know, for all afternoon. And then in, and finally into early evening, uh, it seemed like I finally got caught up on my sleep or something. But I had written some things down on a piece of paper, some questions for God. And, of course, he gave me some, you know, there was just the, I didn't really understand how to be led by the Spirit at that time, and like I do now. I've learned a few things in 40 years, but this is way back in the beginning. But yet, I still heard his voice. I can remember, I didn't know what it was, but it was like, I could, uh, it, like, I couldn't, you like, you could, you think you could hear it in the natural realm, but you couldn't. It was a voice inside, it was in my heart. And so I just got to where I was just listening real close because it's really quiet. I'm the only one in the room. And I could, I could hear. And that was, it's, it was just it was like a voice inside of me. And it answered the questions. And then there was this one place where it was not, it was not on my sheet at all. It just out of the, <laughs> out of the blue, <laughs> I heard this voice inside my, just in my heart that I was to believe for an airplane. Well, airplane, you know, first thing that comes to my mind, well, this is a lot of money, you know, we're, uh, uh, that's just for, you know, people who have money and blah, blah, blah. But I wrote it down, believe for an airplane. And so then, of course, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so uh, all the way then, uh, I guess that would have been, let's see, 76 and 7 would have been, um, yeah, about 6, 76, 70, you know. And I just, for at least seven years, I kept thanking God for the airplane that he told me to believe for. See, this was something, see, that are all things that God speaks to your heart may not always be something for right now. And the scriptures have learned, you know, a lot of scriptures say, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, because timing is important. Galatians 4, Galatians 4, verse 4 and 5 says, But when the fullness of the time had come, and God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, that we, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And so there was a timing. You know, the emerge of the, um, the, the um, God uh, had, had uh, you know, in Isaiah 7, 14, said, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, several thousand years later, 
the angel Gabriel is sent to the Virgin Mary and said, Behold, you shall conceive in your own bring and bear a son shall call his name Jesus. Well, so I just, uh, you know, those earlier years, I just kept driving while airplanes, that's just, you know, in the natural realm, too far out of my reach. And then it, it happened then years later. And it and something like, uh, oh my goodness, over seven years later, I just had an impression in my heart to go ahead and go out to the airport in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and, and uh, get a, just go up for one flying lesson, just to get into an airplane and see what it feels like. Well, I went up there and the instructor took me up for one hour, and I tell you, that was it. I kept on taking instruction to get my pilot's license. I rented uh, airplanes. Then once I got my license, I rented airplanes to fly. And while I was doing that, I was working on my instrument rating. And uh, at every major airport that I'd get to, whether it was San Francisco or, or Minneapolis or you know other big cities, I would just hire, or even Sioux Falls, South Dakota, wherever it's a, a regional airport, I would fly, I would hire instructors all across the country. And it really was pretty interesting because I heard uh, all these pilots had different experiences, like the ones in Minnesota, of course. They had different experiences that they could share with you about flying in snow and ice and all that sort of stuff. And so um, that's what happened. And then he, uh, then eventually we got our own uh, planes. Some were given to us. I remember the, full, the first one that was given to me, I was at a full gospel business meeting in, in Canada. And uh, we're sitting at the head table uh, with the uh, the president and vice president at the, at the full gospel chapter. And the president of the chapter leaned over uh, during our supper, we're eating, and he said, you know, he says, Jim, he says, I feel the Lord's told me to give you my airplane. Well, he had a little two-seater, and he gave me an airplane. It was the first one we got. And then another airplane was given to us up in Alaska. We got a phone call. They actually had to... Uh, had to drive 60 miles to the nearest phone booth in those years and to let me know that the Lord told them to give me their airplane. Well, it was another single engine. And then eventually we got into uh, twin engines. After I got my instrument rating, I got uh, qualified right away in, uh, in multi-engine rating. And so here I have my own airplane, and this really say I was able to do a meeting and fly home after the meeting instead of driving a day or two the next uh, time. And so here I loaded up this airplane. I'm ready to go to Ohio someplace 800 miles away. The weather's clear. It's perfect. Pulled the airplane out of the hangar, loaded it. And here was this, like Paul said in Acts chapter 27 and verse 10. He said, I perceive that this voyage will be much danger and all of that. Well, there was just a knowing. There was no voices or anything. I just know, you know what? I can't, I can't fly my own plane today. I need to get a commercial flight. Well, that's a problem. I mean, I got to go to the airport. I got to unload, go commercial and fly and rent cars. It would have been easier just to fly my plane. But you know what? I unloaded the plane. And to this day, I don't know why. I just perceived that something wasn't right. And so I just obeyed God. So, you know, it's just when you, when you get that sense, you need to obey. And we might not always know why. Just do it. And so that's all part of learning how to not only hear his voice, but obey and develop that intimacy with him where when he speaks, you obey. And then the, uh, we'll have to close this session, but I, I have the next uh, session. I have something very important to share about that <laughs> and looking forward to it. So we'll see you in the next session. Meanwhile, you just be blessed in everything that you set your hands to do.